Hey everybody, thank you so much for tuning into Midgard Musings today and watching today's video. My name is Jesse and I'm the host here on this channel, as you may or may not already know. If this is your first time, I appreciate your support. For everybody else who's already supported Midgard Musings through your views, comments, likes, and subscriptions, thank you very much. I want to call to attention the fact that I am actively and aggressively seeking 2,000 subscribers by or before January 1st, 2020. All right, that means that we need to get at least three new subscribers every day until then, and your help is greatly appreciated. I couldn't do this, well, I could do this if it wasn't for each and every one of you, but it wouldn't be nearly as fun because I would just be talking to nobody. All right, so everybody's participation and involvement on this channel is greatly appreciated. I invite you to please write down here, see it, right down there, please click that subscribe button you don't want to miss any videos here on this channel be sure to click the bell notifications because then you will get notified every time that I upload new content all right guys I appreciate everybody's uh, everybody's support and I look forward to learning new things with each and every one of you about Norse heathenry Germanic paganism all that kind of fun stuff so please become a subscriber today that button is right down here it costs you literally nothing to become a subscriber and then if you want to be notified just click the bell for notifications it's all right if you don't but it is appreciated if you do check the description down below for all the other ways that you can support Midgard Musings through Facebook Patreon Teespring Redbubble uh, anything else that you see down there click on the links follow them see if it's something that fits you I appreciate all your support let's jump in to today's video hail and thank you all all right everybody hail and welcome to today's video here on Midgard Musings thanks for joining me Thanks for watching the intro about all the ways that you can support the channel and how Midgard Musings continues to grow. Thank you for all of that. Uh, today's video comes to me as a suggested video from one of my Patreon supporters. Uh, so thank you, Janet King, for this suggestion. Uh, the video for today is going to be on the topic of grief and specifically, um, you know, kind of how we can approach dealing with grief. Uh, from kind of a heathen perspective or a heathen context, okay? Uh, so before we get that going, let's go ahead and get our incense lit and our candle burnt. And we'll go ahead and get into today's discussion. Alright. Almost didn't want to go there. Here we go. Alright. Cool. Alright, folks. So, the... Uh, you know, the subject of grief, right? Like, this is something that we all have dealt with or deal with in our lives. Um, and it's probably one of the most complex emotions that we could ever experience um, or, or encounter. You know, it's, it's sadness, um, but it goes beyond more than that. There's anger, there could be rage, confusion, frustration, maybe guilt, um, you know, depression, so many things that come along with grief, okay? When we, when we lose someone or we lose something that means a great deal to us, you know, that, that those feelings just overwhelm us at times. You know, it's not just the loss of something that we love, but it's also the destruction of, you know, like a part of ourselves because there was such a strong tie that we had with that person or with that thing. Um, there was there was very there was a very deep connection there. So when we lose those things, it's like we're losing a part of ourselves. Um, and, and largely too, I think that you know one of the things that makes grief so difficult to deal with um, is the fact that we what what we've lost is, is also a sense of control. We've lost of control of a situation. We can't stop something from happening. We can't uh, prevent the loss that was experienced, right? You know, so we're, we're, we're feeling a feeling of helplessness as well comes, comes with feelings of grief. Um, and I've heard grief kind of being compared to like a wolf um, from like children's nightmares or something even, you know. Uh, it finds you when, you know, you're all alone and you feel like you have nothing left to fight with or fight for. Um, and that wolf of grief is relentless, you know, at times, and it's um, from from within our own minds, you know, we're, we're at we're at the, we're in this 
mental battle, emotional battle, um, and that wolf will bite and attack at every vulnerability that we have, and you know, it's like a tauntingness or, or taunting of our weaknesses, um, and, and feeling like we're, those weaknesses and those those things are being exploited in a way. Um, so, <coughs> from from a heathen perspective, you know, I think one of the things that we hear a lot about from various groups is this. Uh, the emphasis or putting the, the power of emphasis on self-reliance, you know, this feeling of strength and, and willpower and, and being being a strong individual and it kind of sets us, sets a lot of people up to think that we have to always be bold, we have to always be strong, we have to be our own army, so to speak, that like this one-man army and as inspirational as this idea of self-reliance can be at times, um, you know, to folks and, and to, to those of us who are coping with such a profound loss and, and, and dealing with grief at the time, these, you know, these platitudes about strength and, and, and self-reliance and, and man up and, and be strong and everything, that, that doesn't help. It, it, it does nothing but um, belittle the struggle that the person is facing, you know. Um, and, and to that, I would want to focus on the fact that, you know, this the self-reliance thing comes from the nine noble virtues, which I think from anybody that's watched my channel long enough, you know what my stance is on the nine noble virtues and how they are not necessarily bad things to consider or to have, but they are definitely not uh, inherently heathen by any means, and, and I don't feel like they have any place in terms of a larger heathen... Uh, approach to things. Like I said, they're not necessarily bad um, things to want to be, but they're not inherently heathen. The thing that is a, a very strong thing within a heathen worldview is the value and the importance of community. Not being on your own, not being by yourself, because your 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 community is what is it, it, it's what keeps things going strong. So you have to be there for one another. You have to, you know, your tribe you, you owe that uh, level of obligation to your tribe, and they owe a level of obligation to you, and everybody kind of has this, it's what Frith is about, right? It's about this um, unspoken or, or, or understood obligation, sense of obligation to one another. Um, and that's where the importance of community comes in over the, the, the importance of being, you know, your, your own single man, one man army, so to speak. Now. Part of being a strong community is that each member does have a, a sense or a level of self-reliance to be able to provide for themselves and provide for their own and not to be a burden on others. But the idea of what I'm bringing out is that they're not, they're there for one another. Their, their, their sense of worth is compounded through the deeds that are done to help benefit the tribe and the community at large, right? Um, and we see instances of grief throughout our lore, and in the sagas even, right? One of the biggest ones that comes to my mind in, in Norse mythology is Baldur's death, right? Um, Baldur died, and or was killed, and when he was taken to hell, and uh, when the, the gods you know, sent an emissary to Helheim to retrieve him or see what could happen to get him back, you know, uh, Hell's uh, ransom, if you will, the demand that she laid out was that everyone should weep for Baldur. Everyone, everything, in all the realms. And so, the idea that there was grief being felt from his loss, we even hear about it from, from the moment he was taken, right, when he was killed. Um, the funeral, the, the, the funeral games, the, the funerary rites, everything that was done, there was, there was grief felt among the Aesir, um, and then among everything except, of course, uh, Loki and the skies who didn't grieve uh, for Baldur. But again, the idea, the, the sense of the fact that even the gods feel and experience grief, um, and that's just from the lore. You know, we have instances and in, 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 uh, times in the sagas where different folks felt grief. Um, there's a saga where uh, one of the folks is uh, Inki Haraldson. Um, and it was said that he cried like a child 
at the loss of his foster father. Um, there's, you know, Eagle, uh, in Eagle's saga, so Eagle Skull of Grimson, you know, he suffered loss, and then some of these other uh, key figures in the sagas who experienced loss, either children or, or parents or something being killed or, or taken from them, they felt grief and, and they experienced that grief over certain periods of time that it talks about in, in the saga. So there's plenty of instances, obviously, this is not something that is new by any means, you know, it's just taking this from an approach of how how one could look at it, how, how one could deal with it from a heathen perspective. Um, you know, the... the in, in, in this culture, in this, you know, arch-heathen world culture, if you will, uh, emphasis was placed on hard work, you know. The old and young alike had to... Uh, they had duties that they had to perform, they had chores, they had things that they had to do again to keep up with just not only themselves and their hearths and their homes, but things that then helped them to build and benefit the, the community at large, you know? Um, so all of these things, when, when a loss was felt, but not just one person didn't feel the, the, the grief of that loss, everybody felt it because it was something that affected the whole tribe. Um, and... and but I think that they looked at it differently. They felt it differently um, just because of the way death was viewed in, by our Archie and ha uh, ancestors, right? Because it was such a common occurrence, whether it be through sicknesses, illnesses, um, accidents, uh, accidents, wars, things like that. You know, um, death was a pretty common occurrence, right? Um, it was literally viewed as an everyday sort of thing, as a, as a very common thing. So, the, the concept, or, or death was not like the end of something. It was, it was the beginning of something new. You know, they, the, you, were, you were leaving your um, mortal or, or profane self and, and go on to the halls of your ancestors, right? So it was looked at a little bit differently, especially in that culture, whereas nowadays, in, in, much of the culture that we live in, um, it's a little bit different. So, but again, um, back then, you know, or, and even in some instances nowadays, I think we see that the, the traditions kind of carry on through that death, again, is, is it was the beginning of something new. And families would get together and they would celebrate the life of that deceased person or, or the, what, who, who they lost through their, uh, you know, rather than dwell in the grief of their loss, they would celebrate their life and their deeds. They would sing songs about their greatness. They would, they would tell tales about them. They would, you know, speak well of them. They would, they would uh, let their, their memory live on through, through, those, through those deeds and through those actions, right? And I think it's a very wise way and, it, and it's a very helpful way of dealing with death. And it's something that I think, you know, sort of a lesson that we could possibly all learn um, even now because if we focus strictly on the loss um, we're going to we're not going to ever get out of that hole that we've kind of fell in we're, we're going to drown in our emotions and lose sight of the happier times and that's not anything I think that you know when I'm gone and when I'm dead and, and when I'm no longer a part of this profane world um, I wouldn't want my families and, and stuff to be so stricken with grief and loss that they can't remember the, the things about me that made them smile, made them happy, made them remember me for the good times, right? For the happier times, the positive things. Um, so I don't think anybody would want that. We should, yes, there's a time to grief. And again, as I said, even in the lore and, and throughout the sagas, we see that grief was felt and, and experienced and, you know, you kind of have to go through that process. It's, it's necessary in the healing uh, process of things, right? You have to go through that. But then to not stay stuck in it, it's to, to remember them through song, through, through words, through deeds, uh, speak well of them, sing their songs highly and, and loudly. Um, you know, it, by doing that, uh, they stay with us, you know? They, they, they stay close to us. Um, they are part of our lives every day. And then what we do by doing that is we give ourselves a much better chance of moving on and and having 
like I said, you know, more positive and, and, and happier times ahead. You know, we don't ever want to forget those that went on before us. We, we And of course we never will, but what we want to remember are the good times and that was what we can do, I think, as, as heathens, is to honor their memory through everything that I just mentioned. mentioned. So only the person that is grieving can, can truly find uh, some sort of a resolution uh, in that, right? We can't come in and fix a problem. We don't want people to come in and fix our problems when we're grieving. You know, we just really need that kind of that shoulder to cry on or that, that ear to just have listened to our, 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 our issues, things that we're, we're experiencing at the time. And, you know, talking earlier about how grief can be compared to like a wolf, um, you know, that the wolf alone knows all the weaknesses. Um, you know, we are the ones truly in tune with how that beast can be defeated, right? Or how that, that, that wolf can be driven away, uh, so it is. So the best that anyone can ever do for those suffering with grief is, is to just be there. You know, don't, don't come in and try to, you know, tell them to, you know, get over it or, or anything like that or, you know, be strong. And it's just it's like, you just got to be there. Just be there for them. Be that presence. Um, you want to, you know, just listen to them. Don't, don't try to tell them anything unless, you know, they come to you for it first. But let them be the ones to speak. Listen to them. Um, be, again, like I said, be a shoulder to cry on. Be willing to suffer with them. Because like I said before, when, in, when communities were so closely knit, when, there was a, when, when the sense of tribe was something that was organic and it wasn't anything that had to be forced, you know, and everybody was so closely knit together through their deeds and through their actions, you know, when one member suffered, all of the members suffer with it or with them. So it becomes a loss for the entire tribe. So suffering and, and grieving together is definitely a part of the process for healing. Um, but we should, like again, we shouldn't be just in there trying to offer the sage advice that we think we want. And I'm guilty of this too. I'm, 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 I'm one of those types that want to fix the issue, right? If, if I see a problem or if I see something, I want to be the one that fixes it. And we can't always have that happen. We can't always be the fixer-upper of, of things, right? We have to just kind of let things take their course. And being there for people is, is one of the biggest gestures and biggest ways uh, of helping them get through it. It's you know, no, no tough love, no none of that. Just just be there for them. Um, it's not easy, right? Because we, we see people struggling, we speak, we see our loved ones suffering, and we want to be there. We want to take that pain away, but just being there is, is the best thing. Um, you know, in the end, I think the, one of the things, greatest things to take away from this is that, you know, the people who make the greatest differences, and this is from my own experience too, and you may have experienced this in your own times uh, throughout your life, is the you know, people who make the greatest differences in our times of need um, are not those that try to heroically lead us out of the darkness, right? They are, they are, that's not the ones that are, that make the greatest differences. The ones that make the greatest difference um, are the ones who are willing to follow us into the darkness and be there for us to whatever end and for however long it takes us to, to get through it ourselves, you know. So that's one thing I think we should take away from this uh, as heathens, you know, be there for our tribes, be there for our for our kindreds and for our folk, and um, don't try to, again, be the heroic leader to take them out of the darkness, be there with them in the darkness, walk, walk with them through that misery and through that grief and be there as a support system because it will strengthen your ties of thrift, it will strengthen the, the sense and value of community that we have and that we're trying to build with one another. So that's what I take away from dealing and, and uh, kind of experiencing grief through a heathen context or from a heathen perspective. So I'm anxious to hear what you guys have to say about this whole thing, if, if how your process of grieving um, or how you've kind of 
dealt with grief before or other people that have dealt with grief and how you've helped them in any way, uh, share it down below in the comments. Let us know what you guys think about this. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Check out all the ways in the description for how you can support Midgard Musings. Got a lot of fun stuff coming up here soon over the coming weeks. I've uh, uh, got a Norse Blood uh, crate, norseblood.com crate that I'm going to be reviewing from the July's Norse crate. So stay tuned for that. And um, lots of other fun stuff coming up. So thank you all again for your support. Everyone that's watching live on Facebook, don't go anywhere so the way I can read your comments. Thank you all for watching today's video on Midgard Musings. Hail, and I'll see you in the next video.